Hey there, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Lots and lots and lots of poker in the last 10 days. I'm a little late putting out this vlog, but I've had so many hands and lots of play, so there's lots of stuff to go over. The WSOP circuit was in town, so my buddy Rob and I decided we would go up, share a room on Thursday night, play in the seniors on Thursday, and then play in the main event on Friday. And sometimes plans change and you play some other tournaments and some other things. So Rob and I both got busted out of the seniors. Let's see, I busted out without getting in the cash. Uh, he actually made the money. I then went to a satellite for the main event. I made it, you're gonna see that here in a minute. And Rob went and played in the high roller. Unfortunately, he got busted. And I had a circumstance this week where I played where I was sick as a dog and you guys are gonna hear about that. So for right now, let's get to some poker. Thursday, November 7th, my daughter's birthday. Happy birthday, Morgan. Uh, here I am playing at the WSOP Circuit Seniors Full Ring Game. Uh, it's a ring event, so here we go. So really not much to say for the seniors. I started off poorly, then I did uh, poorly, and then I busted. So I did poorly. <laughs> so aggravating, just busted the seniors. I'm about to go play in a satellite to the main event. I decided I wanted to play in the main event and I really didn't want to pay the full 1700 so I did not rebuy to the seniors. Instead, I bought into a $250 satellite to the main event. 7,000 chips, 20 minute level, so a little bit of a turbo, and I did not start off very well. I was down to uh, 4,100 chips when I did get pocket kings and I doubled up through a guy who had ace king. Woohoo! But with about half the field left, I was down to about 13 big blinds. I got out my Nash fold shove chart. I ended up getting ace deuce in the cutoff. That's very, very low on the range. I shove it all in there. Pocket Queens calls me and what a fantastic run out for me. I four flush and I'm still in the survivor tournament for the main. So the very last time I was in Jeopardy in the Survivor, I had 11K, I was in the small blind with pocket tens. I'm going against a vlog watcher, Nam Win, who had a very, very large stack. He was under the gun, he made it 1800, comes all the way around to me, I'm all in. He makes the call, he has pocket sevens. My pocket tens hold up on a good board. <laughs> he says, I should have paid you in all green chips. <laughs> Pretty funny. With 20 players left, we're on a break in the mega satellite to the main event. Uh, average is like 20,000. I have 31,000 in a survivor. So I should be good unless something really, really funny or strange happens. So uh, very, very happy. So we got to the last break of the day and I was pretty comfortable. And then I just went on a tear. Holy cow, I am running hot at the survivor tournament. There's like 13 of us left, 10 of us get paid. And I've got a ton of chips. I ended up being the huge stack that was pushing people around and bullying and all that kind of really, really fun stuff if it's you and you have the chips. With 13 players left, I think I had uh, just about 40, 42% of the chips in play so I could do whatever I want. And I think that sometimes players like this, they play wrong. They just shove all in and said, hey, anybody wanna play? Come on. I think you should either limp or min raise and let people try and make a hand and then stack them off. And I must've done this, I don't know, to four or five players uh, to get us down close to the money. We eventually made the money, so I am in for the main event for only $250. Talk about WSOP circuit, just about to enter the main event. I just finished up my vlog and we're gonna get in there for the main. All right, let's go. So the main event is a $1,700 tournament, gets lots of pros in it. I think it was a million dollar guaranteed. Of course, they crushed that. They always do at Winstar. I won five out of my first six hands that I played and was still down 5,000 chips <laughs> because the one hand I lost was a big one where it was like set over set. So. Eh, not so hot. Uh, main event, awful start for me. I'm down to 18,000 on the first break, starting stack at 30. So I got some work to do. Second break, not good. I'm down to 14,6. Yeah, I was down to 8,000 and I doubled up. So <laughs> at least I got a few more back. 
When I had 9,300 chips, I won. I doubled up with jacks against nines. And then when I had about 12 to 18 uh, big blinds, when blinds were like 600, 800, I got a number of shoves uh, through um, where I, at least I maintained my chip stack and got to a point where I didn't have to shove anymore. For me, it was certainly a lesson in patience. I did not go over the starting chip stack of 30,000 chips until well after the dinner break, which is at level 10. All right, we're going to dinner break. I have 23,700. I have never made it over starting stack. I've been milking the short stack between 10 and 20 bigs for a long time, hours. So going to break, gonna come back with uh, 23 bigs. All right, here we go. And then the fun began. All right, every player that makes it deep, deep, deep can tell you about a hand early on where they were either fortunate or something like that, or they would have been out of the tournament. And I had one of those also. With blinds at 500, 1,000, 1,000, I have 32K, I'm in middle position two. Under the gun, pretty tight player, makes a 2,500, middle position one, myself, and the big blind call. So the flop with 11,500 comes eight of clubs, nine of diamonds, 10 of clubs. I am open-ended on the top side and I have the nut flush draw. I will take that flop any day of the week. It goes check. The original race makes it 3,500. The next guy folds. I raise it up to 9,500. He tanks and goes all in for 30,000. That guy folds. I pretty much snap call. I figure I'm not going to get a better draw than this. And I don't know the numbers right this minute as I'm filming this, but I'm going to run the numbers on what I think I would have had as equity based on what I think he could have possibly continuation bet with and then shoved all in with. All right, here are the numbers. If I give him a range on the initial bet of sevens plus, ace jack plus, king jack plus, and queen jack, then I am still a 60% favorite. Even after the shove, if I give him sevens, uh, ace 10, ace jack, king 10, king jack, queen 10, queen jack, I am still a 57% favorite. So I think it's really, really an excellent shove. He turns over pocket tens for top set. Ouch. Uh, although I still got plenty of equity. The turn though, is the nine of clubs ouchy poo he's got a full house hey i am open-ended straight flush draw and the river is the seven of clubs yes straight flush i'm still alive i doubled up now i've got a lot of chips like sixty-five thousand. plenty of chips to make a really good run now in fact a few hands after that there's a new guy that buys in a brand new to the tournament pro i've seen him play many many times very very aggressive he has thirty thousand because he hadn't even played a hand yet i'm in the p1 with sixty five thousand i have ace of spades king of hearts uh, i make it twenty six hundred the new guy on the button calls and the flop with seventy seven hundred in the pot comes king of diamonds nine of diamonds five of clubs uh i make it thirty one hundred he makes the call the turn with 13,900 in the pot is the four of diamonds. I check, he bets 6,500. I've seen this guy play many, many times. He just wants me out. He could have a flush, but I shove all in. He snap calls. Uh, I say, hey, a flush is good. He says, I ain't got no flush. <laughs> he has king of clubs, queen of hearts. The river is the 10 of clubs. And I stack off another player, and now I go to a really, really nice number of chips. Well over 110, 115,000 chips now. I'm under the gun, 98K, I have pocket kings, I make it 4,100, Jim Carroll calls. The MP1, who's got a really, really big stack, uh, 160,000, raises it to 7,600. I decide, you know what, I'm not gonna mess around here. I shove all in. Uh, I don't like it, I could have made a lot more chips. Jim folds, the other guy tanks and folds. Mm probably too much but I am up to 160k now yes all right last hand before the last break I believe um, I'm under the gun with pocket aces I have 115k uh, I make it 4100 the button who's an older gentleman who goes all in for 14,800 I snap call he has king 10 
And the board comes out three, king, seven, four, king. <laughs> I'm down to 100K, dang it. I could have been up to like 185K, oh well. The good news was I had enough chips to withstand a few little hits like that one. So with my 100K, I come back from break, I'm in the cutoff with pocket fours, I have 100K. Uh, Jim Carroll, middle position one, Jim is quite the uh, quite the nut. <laughs> He's a good player, likes to banter and talk it up. Uh, this plays way more loose than I do. He makes it 4,000, comes around to me, I make the call. The flop, with 12,000 in the pot, comes six of hearts, four of clubs, nine of diamonds. Jim leads out for 8K. I got a set of fours. I want to put some money in the pot here. I raise it up to 19,000. Jim doesn't really hesitate and he bumps it up again to 36,000. <laughs> okay, he's willing to get it in there. I shove all in for effective stack of 91K, which is Jim's. Jim tanks and tanks and tanks. He says, oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna make the worst call ever here. And he does. He calls with nine ace. <laughs> and the board runs out six of diamonds, queen of clubs, and I go from 100,000 chips to a little over 200,000 chips, and I knock out Jim Carroll. Nice. All right, they announced that we we're gonna have four hands left, so we play four hands and three hands and two hands, and on the very, very last hand, I have a good stack. Blinds are at 1,500, 3,000. I have 220,000 with pocket fives in the big blind. The Button, a young Asian guy who uh, came to our table with not very many chips, but now he's the chip leader, very, very good player. He makes it 8,000. The Small Blind, another very large stack, 260,000. He makes the call. I decide, hey, I'm gonna set mine here, I make the call. The Flop with 27,000 in the pot comes. Six of Clubs, five of Hearts, yay me, King of Hearts. Now, the Small Blind leads out for 15,000. All right, I made the decision here. I don't really, really wanna play a gigantic pot. I'm a little bit afraid of hearts. I know this is the wrong way to think, but I just make the smooth call. The original raiser then raises it up to 55,000. Holy cow, now what do I do? The small blind tanks and folds, and then I change my philosophy. <laughs> hey. If he's got pocket sixes or pocket kings, I'm just gonna go home. Otherwise, I'm all in. So I shove all in for the full 220,000, and he tanks, and he tanks, and he tanks. And he makes the call, and what he later said was just the worst call that he might have ever made in his entire life. He called with king of spades, four of hearts. He thought that I must have been on a heart draw or on a straight draw. I was not. I should turn over my set of fives, and I am way ahead. The board runs out. Nine of spades, jack of diamonds, and I end day one with 474,500 chips, the day 1A chip leader. Holy schmoly. Day one of the uh, WSOP circuit main event at Choctaw. Ooh, I'm bagging a big stack. 474,500. You guys will hear about some of these hands here shortly. <laughs> the last hand of the night was pretty amazing. All right, they played day 1B on Saturday. Uh, I just spent time with family. We went out for my daughter's birthday, and I didn't really study or anything. I just had wanted to keep doing what I was doing. And on day 1B, they had no bigger stacks than mine. So I went into day two as the chip leader. Woohoo! And day two kind of started like day one. No big pots, no big hands. I just kind of dwindled down, but there were two big differences. Number one, I had such a huge stack that me dwindling didn't really mean anything. In fact, at the dinner break, I was still in the top 15, <laughs> even though I didn't really play very many big hands. I had one, and I'll tell you that in a minute. The other thing was I was sick as a dog. Oh my gosh, it's the worst I've felt in such a long time. In between hands, I would put my head on the table or I would just sit there and just close my eyes and massage my temples because I had a migraine, I felt sick. Oh my gosh, it was just horrible, horrible, horrible. 
So in spite of the fact that I was really, really sick, I really didn't make too many mistakes in, in literally the four days that I played, including the uh, satellite. I did make a couple of mistakes though. The one hand I did play before dinner break that was of any relevance at all was kind of, was a mistake hand. Blinds were at 5,000, 10,000. I was under the gun with Ace King. I had 440K, still a top five stack. Um, I made 22,000. The cutoff and the big blind, who was Andrew Barfield, who ended up making it all the way down to getting knocked out fourth, was in the big blind and he made the call. Very, very good player. Um, the flop with 81,000 came King of Hearts, Four of Clubs, Four of Hearts. It checked to me, I made it 28,000. The cutoff folded, but Andrew called. The turn now with 137K in the pot is the Eight of Hearts bringing in the flush. It goes check, check. The river is the Ace of Clubs, and now he leads into me for 55,000. A four's there. Hearts are there. It doesn't matter that I have top two because what is he ever betting here that doesn't have ace king beat? The answer is nothing. <laughs> he either has a four or he has hearts. There's just, I made the call. Everything in my gut was screaming fold. I know to fold here. I couldn't do it. Uh, he says, you got ace king, don't you? I said, yes, I do. And he shows queen seven of hearts for the flush. Mm, just a bad, bad play. Oh, I forgot, one other hand before dinner break with 54 players left. I'm in the big blind with ace of clubs, 10 of hearts, I have 380K, blinds are at 400, 800. It folds around to the button who is Alan Kessler. He goes all in for about 14,000. Uh, I tank a little bit. I make the call, Alan says, do you have an ace? I indeed do have an ace. He knows he's way behind. He has ace six to my ace 10. I got a good run out. I knocked out Alan Kessler and I got back to a really nice, decent amount of chips. And at dinner break, I was still in the top 10. With 47 left, I had 434K. And after the dinner break, I did make my second mistake hand. Still felt horrible, still felt awful but we had gotten down to 25 players left, and then I had two very interesting hands against Demarge Davenport. Jay is a semi-reg at Windstar. He is very, very loose, likes to mix it up, likes to intimidate and push and play hard. Uh, tough player to play against, um, and these two hands are against Jay. The first one, which was my second mistake hand, <laughs> I have ace of clubs, jack of clubs, I have 500,000 on the button. Uh, the MP2 opens to 36,000. He's a very, very loose, really aggressive player, so that didn't really bother me too much. So it comes to me, but I got Jay behind me. I don't really, really feel very comfortable with ace jack against Jay, so I'm gonna raise it up pretty big, and in fact, I made a mistake, and I jammed. 32 big blinds. I don't like this play at all. Jay wakes up with ace king, makes the call, and the other guy folds. So I'm in a world of hurt. I never ever should have done this. The board runs out five, five, four, nine. The miracle jack on the river. So even though I made a mistake, I got rewarded for bad play on this particular hand. Woohoo! I'm over a million again, and I'm in the top 10 again, and bad play rewarded with a suck out. I guess you gotta get lucky sometimes, but that's just a bad, bad play. I should never have done that. So just a few hands later, probably the most interesting hand of the tournament, for me anyways, um, I am under the gun with pocket deuces. I have 950,000. Blinds are still eight and 16. I make it 36,000. Jay makes the call in middle position. So the flop with 112,000 comes eight of clubs, nine of clubs, 10 of diamonds, and it goes check, check. As I told you before, Jay is very, very aggressive. So what does this tell me? It means he doesn't have a jack, he doesn't have a seven, he doesn't have a 10, unless he has jack, queen, or six, seven. The turn is the six of clubs. I check, Jay bets 100,000. I think I'm good here. <laughs> I make the call. The river is the four of hearts. Uh, I check, Jay now makes it. 245,000, he bets really, really slow. He's thinking, I'm looking at him, I'm staring at him, and I just know in my gut, 
that I am good here. Now I realize there are not a ton of hands here that he could be bluffing with, um, that he wouldn't have raised pre-flop. He's got ace five, ace three, king queen, uh, a slowly played ace queen. So there's not very many, but my gut is screaming at me to make the call. I tank and I tank and I tank, probably four minutes or more. I turn over my pocket deuces and I say, Jay, I think I'm good here, but I fold and he shows ace five for the bluff and the table went crazy. How could you even think about calling with pocket deuces here? Well, you know what? I was right. My read was right. My gut was right. I just couldn't pull the trigger. So I talked to my son, Billy, about this hand for quite a bit, and he actually thinks that it's the right fold. Um, if I fold the hand right there, I still have 814,000 chips, which is still quite a bit over the average. Uh, if I make the call and am wrong and lose, I go down to 569,000 chips, which is definitely in the bottom third, maybe the bottom quarter. If I win, I go to 1.3 million, which is, a big deal. However, as my son said, it's not as big a deal as going down to the bottom quarter of the of the tournament. So, in reality, he said, unless I absolutely 100% know, which I didn't, I had a really good feeling, that fold is the right thing. So, very, very interesting spot. Man, I wanted to pull the trigger. I couldn't do it. <sighs> so, eventually, I bagged up on the end of day two with 17 players remaining, I was in 13th place with 950,000 chips. All right, main event day three, had to take Monday off. I felt way, way better, yay me. Anyhow, came back, 17 players, I was in 13th place. Uh, let me talk about some of the people that I played against first. Ben Thompson, a reg from Windstar was there. Uh, Dave Alpha, Dave had already previously won a WSOP uh, Circuit Choctaw event. Lily Coletto, who you've seen on Live at the Bike, very, very pretty girl. Uh, Andrew Barfield, very, very good player. Uh, Kevin Eister, what a great guy he was. A lot of fun, very talkative, uh, very positive. Has over $5 million in tournament wins. He was a really good guy. Uh, Nate Kogel, who ended up winning the event. Nate's a very, very good player. Tough to play against. I believe he's from San Antonio. And then Tim Burden. And my parents always told me, if you don't have something nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. Then I had my rail. These guys were awesome. So I have my buddy, Dane, just a really, really great uh, friend of mine. I learned how to play against the very loose, 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 aggressive players against Dane. <laughs> Then my buddy Wayne came. Uh, Wayne is just a great guy. Wayne is just a good old boy, man. <laughs> and he would he would do anything for you. He'd give you the shirt off his back. Great, great guy. And then my buddy Rob, a great friend, a study partner. Remember what I said on the previous vlog about Rob and me playing in this tournament. Don't remember? Here's the clip. I'm going up there with my buddy Rob. We're gonna swap 10% again on any of the tournaments that we play together. And my goal this time is to make him some money because it's been kind of a bit one-sided here lately. So I'm gonna do it. All right, so let's get to some day three poker. As I said earlier, I felt so much better. I had uh, 950,000 chips and blinds were at 1530. So a little over 30 uh, bigs uh, and the day started pretty much just like all the other days, just pretty much card dead, getting absolutely nothing. Although it did enhance my reputation as the tight old guy <laughs> quite a bit. I hardly played any hands. We're down to 15 players. Blinds went up to 20,000, 40,000. Uh, and I finally got a hand that I could play. I got pocket jacks into the gun when I had 700,000, uh, a little less than 20 bigs. I went ahead and shoved and everybody folded. Then we got down to 14 players, seven-handed at both tables. I'm in the hijack with ace of clubs, four of hearts. I had uh, gotten down to 650,000. I shove, because the Nash fold shove chart says do it, and everybody folded. Woohoo! And just a few hands later, I'm in the middle position too. 
I have pocket queens. I have 750,000. Uh, what is that? 18 bigs? Uh, so I thought about making a raise here instead of shoving, but I decided, nah, I'm going to shove it all in there. And I got called by Tim Burton, who had Ace King. He had 1.4 million chips, so he had me covered. And the board came, King of Clubs, 10 of Clubs, 10 of Diamonds, 5 of Spades, 2 of Clubs. And I am knocked out in 14th place from the WSOP Circuit Main Event Choctaw. Hey guys, I just got knocked out of the World Series of Poker uh, Main Event in 14th place Ooh. for, what did I win? 16,822. These guys were all railing me, so I really, really appreciate that. So, fun stuff. I wish I'd have done better. So, what did I learn from the WSOP Circuit? Some of them are learned and some of them I knew, but it got reinforced. Uh, number one is, hey, I can play patient. I can play very, very tight. I can fold big hands. I have not always been really willing to do that, although I play much, much, much tighter in big tournaments than I do in your regular one. But I, I was very, very happy with how I played that way. The second thing is, man, my gut is normally right. Go with the gut. Whether that means making a big fold when you should or making a big call when it's necessary. Uh, you can't be afraid to look stupid. <laughs> and sometimes when you make a big call, a hero call, you're going to look stupid. But if your gut says to do it, you should do it. And I didn't make that big call against Demarge. I kind of wish I had. Uh, but follow your gut. I know I should follow my gut when I have a really, really strong feeling. I'm normally right. The third thing, kind of reinforced, not learned, is a big stack is important. It's to be coveted, it's to be protected, and it's to be used. Uh, having a big stack makes up for hours and hours and hours of being card dead. Uh, I didn't play for hours on day two, and I was still in the top 15 near the end of the day. And finally, again, not learned but reinforced, is I have awesome friends. I have awesome supporters on this vlog. I had so many people that gave me positive support and said I can do it and go win a ring. And I had actually my buddies come out and rail me. I just can't tell you guys how much that means and how important it is to psyche and playing well and all that kind of stuff. So all I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, you guys, I think that's going to do it for this, what I hope was a very, very entertaining vlog. Um, oh, I've already played some sessions for my next vlog. Uh, I did a Johnny Vibes meetup game, and then I did another session where I did a special kind of uh, game where I could only do certain things pre-flop, and you're going to find out about that. It was very entertaining, very, very interesting for me. I learned a lot, so look forward to that in the next vlog. Again, thank you guys so, so much for commenting and subscribing and supporting me during my run and uh, you guys have a wonderful fantastic and blessed week and i'll see you next time bye